and let's now go and build our book uh, entity so entity is a table and we need to connect you see like we have created just an empty blank page if you do the same thing new class in eclipse it will automatically put the package and class name but in here we have to do it by ourselves so the first one is package we need to connect all these to make it part of one package there we go and we need an entity called java annotation which is that entity get it it's kind of slower sometimes to read autocomplete for me so here's the other one you can give a table name if you want and name equals for example book if you don't it will pick up the class name so the object name and it will translate that into a table name so those are the two things and they come from these packages the persisting entity table so that's the library for that and now the class name itself public class and it is just called book so here we go now we decide what we want in this table and that will be we definitely need an id so we want a serial number so we will, it will be private long id we need private title which is going to be type string private author name string author name and the last one for this part will be private published which is dates so type date you want to import java util date not the sql so i should see one it didn't import i'm gonna press control space and bring this down hit enter so there we go java util date and let's add one more it will be private double and that will be price now we have these we do need setters and getters but two more things we will add which will be automatic date time that's created and saved in the table that will be private date create created at and private date updated at so now we are gonna add our validation so we don't just want these to be there and just to work with it we have like we want the serial numbers to be the id to be um primary key and then we need to have a validation if something is created it should change it there but if it is updated it should not change this one but change that one so the first thing the annotation is at id which is which also comes from java java express existing packages so we will get an id and the other one we will add at it it's at generation gener generated value we need this one so we want it automatically to generate value for us you can put read it more so once we choose this then we define the strategy which will be generation type and then you have a couple choices it can be automatic can be identity sequence uh, each one it has its own definition but sequence is like more followed by database sequence number but we only need identity we want it at the column level so the table just primary key for that one so we are done with validation primary key and since we are putting these this will automatically generate value and put it in each time an object is instantiated from book so we don't need to put any value for this can you do that of course you can do manually type it but once we do this we want this to be done automatically 
So for the title, we just don't want people to leave in a blank title. So we would say at size, the minimum needs to be at least one letter. Maximum needs to be 255 characters. And message, if you want any message for it, that should be please enter between one to 255 characters. So it shows a red sign. Let me see what is wrong with it. Let's import this one. So validation from JavaX, that's fine. And let's copy the same thing for the others. We will need this more like uh, once we build a web page, you render it, the same errors keep will keep showing up. So for price, I won't add any validation for now. So we will leave that one blank just for fun. And for the date, so in here we will use JSON date. JSON format date, there we go. And we want it to be pattern. So how we want to save this? Because it's published, it's not automatic. Year first, month, these are two capital letters, then days. So that should be the format for that one. So for this, I would like to, we can also give this um, date time format, for example, you could say like date time format and then the same thing pattern what do you want to record you want to record year and you can put it like in a different format but it's not a good practice everything needs to be in the same type as the whole table so then you can have hours and um, extra stuff so i don't need the format for this one i'm going to comment this out just in case if you want to use if you do this it will follow this pattern and but what i want for this one is colon in this validation i want i don't want users to update it or the application to update this table once it's created updatable equals to false and for update it i can give it just a format like the above, let's use it at this one. Update time format. Do you want to record hours or not? But let's give it. It's just for the purpose of the practice. So I'm using different style, but if you create a table, everything has to have mostly the same style, the same pattern. So you don't create a problem for yourself. And for all these, we need two more things. We need a default constructor since it's Spring Boot. So we do need to have a default constructor. And since an, this is an API, we will have a constructor with value because that will make our job easy when we instantiate an object from it on the API side. But one more thing we will do on this part. So before we forget, let's do the constructors first. That will be public book. So that's just a default or empty constructor. Then we will do one more public book and we will give it all the values we have there. We have a lot, we don't need ID because it, it will be automatically. So we need string title. We need the string author name and we need double price and we need date date published and that's it the other would the other two should be done automatically and now we need to connect them so this the title equals to title and this dot author name connect to author name and the only thing I would like to point out here is that the reason I'm using this is because we used the same name as the variables in the constructors. So we want to make sure our, our application knows that this state refers to the class. And this is the variable of the constructor. 
I could definitely change this one and get rid of um, this for example you could do publish and this need to be needs to be published and for that I can get rid of this one so for this let's have everything synced well the same thing because of uh, there we go so they all look con they're all con concise so they're all concise let's now do add two more things there's something called in java or in a spring boot uh, annotations transient and you will use that more in like for example password confirmation that we will do it uh, hopefully in a future application that you create password once but the second one will just check it you will check compare the second field with what you have in the table but what we do here is uh, in java persistent we want to make sure that each time these objects are instantiated data is inserted in these two tables or if there's a change made so it needs to be done automatically so for that we have one more it's called a tree persist you can google search this one and the model the, the whole uh, syntax is there so this is a seller on create we see whenever someone instantiates an object on creation run this method which will be this dot created at equals to new date Gonna have extra logic if you need but that's what we need for this one on pre-update you want to if someone wants to update this one then if update is run on this variable then point on update if that's run this dot update equals to new date so we want this to to be if there's no data and the instantiation is run then update it to a new date if the data is already there then change that date when the changes are made so for example you have a name with z and then you figure out that was s and then you want to change that so that's what it is and now we need setters and getters for all of these so I could type all of them here, but I have installed the extension thanks to these developers. And live on Visual Studio Code is much better than it used to be. So that's all done. As always, once you do this part, you do wanna run your application to make sure everything is running. So that would be a Spring Boot. I forgot something that's called Maven because this is based on Maven. Okay, application is running. I'm going to check my database. Use test tables. How oh, actually? So I do have a table now created. Where is test refresh? Test that's the table created there called book, and it has all these uh, columns that we or fields that we created in our object. So now let's go back Visual Studio Code. Sorry for the white bright screen if you're using a black background. It does sometimes bother the eye. So the second step I usually do is that I create something in my controller so I know that my API is responding, even though I know right now it does because the application doesn't have any problem. But let's do this. Let's connect the package. Okay, so this is a controller. That's controller. You see the package, uh, we have the controller so in here i would say public what is this this is a class book controller and we will create this one so to just respond with a message uh, actually one more thing i would like to point out here is uh, if you're building a 
an API, the best thing is to have this as wrist controller, which would be wrist controller. There we go. So what what why you want to use wrist controller not at controller? At controller you would use it with JSP and use wrist controller for this one. Just brief information. So for wrist controller, yeah, you can do use both. But the extra steps you don't want to do it. So it's best if you have just an if you build just an API controller, use risk controller. And uh, for this part, we can also do add requests mapping. And we would say that the address should start with request API. Should I put it there or just add it later? So let me comment this out for now, but I will come back to it to make uh, life not that confusing. So I would say at git mapping, if someone comes to API slash, let's book, just make it book, books. If someone comes to th this address, which will be local 800, we can change the port, but for now, public. I want to return a string and get book names for now. It will just return a string. Hello, this this is from the controller class. Okay, let's uh, restart and rerun, see how it goes. Looks like I missed up something. So that's line eight, line eleven. Let's go check what it is. Book control controller. Yeah, it was a wrong misspelling. So that is running. Let's go to our postman, the man who's jumping from the moon. So let's have a git method. And this git method, which will be local, actually it doesn't have API, local host 8080. And I need to check, did I put it at books or book? That is books. Let's send the request. There we go. And return it. So now it is time to point out the difference. So when you, so once you create the main address for the API, usually you want to add the API name in front of it for all the other methods that you're going to create. So one of the easy thing, uh, way of doing this is, just put the request mapping there and add API. So now that part will be added here. So anything, it will start from API, then it will be slash books. So I'm going to restart this. Looks like it did restart it. So if I send it now, it shouldn't, yep, didn't find the address. So now I'm going to add the API and it works. So that means that each time you create a set and get mapping request, each time you declare this annotation, the request mapping would always will have this API in front of it. So all you will do in the future will be like slash and all these things, whatever address you put. 